Good evening. Welcome to the March 12th, 2019 regular selectmen board meeting. All the selectmen are here, town manager, town clerk, there's planning board chair, there's various other people all over the place. Um, is, um, please stand with me. Before we say the pledge, I'd like to have a moment of silence for Joel Barnes. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, before we start our regular order of business, I, I just want to speak a little bit about um, what's happened in the last couple of weeks um, is <clears throat> we had Captain Joel Barnes pass away fighting the fire here in Berwick. It's been a very emotional and raw week for us all. Um, he had a very, very good tribute paid to him on Sunday up in, the, uh, up in uh, Portland. Is, um, I want to thank everybody that was involved in that is we couldn't have gotten through this without the support network that we got and we had support from around the country is uh, I want to thank all the firemen that came for that call on Friday March 1st and I want to thank all the first responders and firemen who have been manning our station keeping our residents safe while we went through this uh, <coughs> What happened up on Sunday was a great tribute, but is I personally think that we need to do something here in Berwick, something more personal at a appropriate time, is um, something for the town to organize and participate in so that we can get some closure here. So, first order of business. Approval of the February 26, 2019 minutes. I move that we approve the minutes as presented. Do I have a second? A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? A couple of stains. Oh, was I? Is, um, first public comment. If you have a public comment, please step to the podium. Is, uh, you have a five minute period to speak is address any questions or comments to the board. One, one twice. And we'll put it in. We have no public hearings tonight. Um, reports of committees is we have a report from Envision. Double duty tonight, huh, Rick? Yeah. <laughs> Rick Vandenberg, 51 East Pasture Road, James Wilson will not give his views. Uh, our general report uh, is going to be brief. Um, the, the latest thing that we're working on is the outdoor summer concert series, and James has got a few dates in the books. And uh, first date is uh, August 3rd, followed by August 24th, and it'll happen right out here, right out in front of the town hall. Um, the first uh, event will be uh, custer uh, cu country western music, followed by the second one, which will be classic rock. And that's sort of, that, that's, that is the report for tonight. So <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we'll be hearing again from you shortly. <laughs> um, Thank you. Uh, BCTV doesn't have a report. Terry's actually training a new person in on the system in there, so she's not coming out. Um, we have no department reports tonight. Appointment is Noah Cobb. Please step forward. Noah wants to be put on as a planning board alternate member for a three-year term. Um, give us a little bit about you and why you want to be working with the planning board, if you would. Well, my name is Noah Cobb. Uh, I'm a resident on Worcester Road. I uh, recently ran to be the state rep for Berwick and was unsuccessful in that attempt, but I would like to continue serving my community and the planning board seems like a good place for me. I'm a business owner 
Um, been running a successful business for upwards of eight years with my wife. Uh, and I feel like I could really uh, bring a new perspective to the planning board to help bring in uh, newer businesses, especially from the uh, a tech side, which is where most of my specialty lies and most of my training. And I'd love to see if I could uh, help improve my community. Any questions of Noah? No. Thank you for offering to run. Yeah, thank you very much. It, 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 I, I will add that is uh, Noah's asking to be on the alternate on the planning board, but he's also taking out papers to be a selectman. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, is if so. he becomes a selectman, he can't be on the planning board, but I'm good way to head your back. <laughs> I'm aware of that, but, you know, I do want, I, like you said, he has a backup bet, plan. I, yeah. I can't make I like one, that. I still want to make the other and right. see if I can help my community out that way. That's good. We appreciate it. I don't appreciate. think you're going to have people fight me for this one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, at least. Well, you know, you will see. I know. Yeah. We'll see. No, thank you very no, much. Thank you. thank you. Very much. Thank you. Do I have a motion to so appoint? So moved. Yeah. Second. Any further discussion? Mm -mm. All those in favor? Congratulations. Perfect. Our next is Dick Moore. Dick wants to be a member of the BCTV committee. Is uh, Dick's been involved with BCTV before? Is uh, and he's brave enough to face it again. Ladies and gentlemen of the uh, selectmen and Mr. Town Manager, everyone. Uh, my name is Dick Moore, and I've lived here in Berwick all my life. Well, not yet, but we're <laughs> here. And, uh, we're, yeah, we're not rushing you. <laughs> I'd like to become a member of the uh, BCTV because number one, it, it's something in service I can do to the community, and uh, also I've got an idea for a project that I uh, presented to uh, Terry Wright. She's our uh, director, and thank God for her because when I presented this project to her, she had so many ideas and so many <laughs> ways to improve it. No surprise really, there. She really, really is going to make a big difference in this. <coughs> and what it is, I'll be brief as I can, it's called Project Remembrance, a tribute to past and present members of the armed forces in appreciation of the sacrifices they have made. And what we're going to do, as soon as that new uh, soundproof uh, recording room there is done, we're going to start interviewing members of the armed forces. And that includes men and women, whether they served in combat or not, whether it was World War II or Korea or Afghanistan or Vietnam, and also even those that want to be that haven't served in combat, they served stateside or whatever. <coughs> and we want to do this to get their point of view from their service and things about what they did and uh, get it down for posterity and we're going to sum a few of the fine details. We're going to discuss only that which they want to discuss. We're going to be real careful with that. Come up with not a script, but you know, a format of questions we're going to ask, and and, and we'll also be spontaneous. And we're going to try to do this really professional, along the lines of the uh, inside the actor studio type thing. If any of you remember that, you know. Uh, so we hope to do really, really great things with that, and uh, we hope to start filming next month with our first the guest and uh, if the uh, studio is done we'll do that and we tend to make the first showing around Memorial Day and of course that'll depend on the finishing of the studio but I've already got one gentleman lined up and I want to tell you about this from Lee New Hampshire and he's a Vietnam veteran and I happened to meet him about a month ago at Kayla's country store they've got a little fireplace a little table with chairs and he was sitting there, he had his red Marines hat on, he's about my age. And I sat down, talked to him, introduced myself, and uh, started telling him about our project. And he was real, real encouraged by that. By the time I was done, he stood up, he hugged me, tears in his eyes, and he said, it's about time somebody did something like this. He said, that is something that people, uh, local, should, should, should do, he said. And I appreciate it, he said, because I'm kind of on a short fuse. He says, I have, uh, I have been in the last stage of uh, cancer due to Agent Orange. He says, so I'm, I'm ready to do this. I presented this uh, Tuesday night to the uh, 
American Legion members, and you could have heard a pin drop, and I started talking about that. And at the end of it, there were some simple questions. One gentleman stood up and he said, you know, he said the number of suicides, he said, due to PTSD, he said, in all wars, is incredible. He said, especially the Vietnam War, the number that have done that, in comparison to the number that served, he says, it's, it's incredible. He says, but you know, you have a chance here, possibly, to let somebody get that off their chest, and you may change their life by doing that. And I just looked at him, and I said, I, I hope you're right. I can't imagine that, but I, I hope you're right. We also intend later on to hopefully interview the town firemen, police members, uh, people that have interesting hobbies, any, anything like that. We expect this to really, really take off. And I thank you all for the opportunity to serve. Hey, sir. Hey, you know, uh, it's, it's guys like you and this young man here that make this job sitting here enjoyable. So thank you very much for your, for your dedication and your, your time. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Thank you all. I, I, think, I think Terry has something to say. Uh. I apologize. I was going to come out and just give a quick update earlier, but I'm also oh, training. Oh, in so that far. case, hang on a minute then. Yeah. We can get through this one yeah, first. No, I thought you were going to speak. Speak about, speak oh, too. okay, I thought you were going to do the presentation, nope, no, 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 no. okay. <laughs> I, I just want to say that it's a joy. Dick um, has been involved, obviously, through his son, um, and he has been down before. He had actually come to the committee once before, but wasn't, the timing wasn't right, so I'm glad that he's back. I am looking forward to working with him on this project, but also having him on the committee as feedback for the things that we're doing. Thank you. Um, we have a motion to appoint Dick Moore to the BCTV committee for a term of a three years. To, I'll make a motion to appoint Dick. Right. We have a second? Second. Any further discussion? No. Uh, I just want to say that uh, I, I was at your presentation uh, that you gave to the American Legion. I appreciated your, your efforts and your diligence in pursuing this project. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Look forward to you uh, completing the, the project. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> um, I'm going to request that uh, we take some items out of order here. There's, there's been a request that uh, we do our abatement, so our uh, assessor can uh, go home. <laughs> Is, um, please sp sp yep, step up. Right. Step up, Paul. <laughs> One abatement. Um, this is a property on 215 Long, uh, Long Swamp Road. Uh, the um, it's map is R007 Lot 1-A. <coughs> Subject property is a ranch style home. Um, it's been 2.51 acres. The owner is concerned that the property is over assessed due to discrepancies on the property record card. Uh, what happened during the cyclical review process, it was estimated that the property had an in-law apartment and the front portion of the dwelling had finished space, which was not actually finished. So we uh, arranged for an appointment, went out there and looked at the property and um, uh, made the corrections. After the corrections were made, the assessed value decreased by $11,100 from $261,800 to $250,700. So we're recommending an abatement in the amount of $195.36. Um, any questions of Paul? Mm -hmm. uh, I move we accept Paul's recommendation for abatement for tax map lot R007, TAC1, TAC8. I'll that. second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. All right, um, the other one is, a, is actually a letter uh, to the board um, of a, a property on 411 Diamond Hill Road, and they are requesting the uh, property taxes be abating for, abated for the past three years due to an, an error in the number of acres that were listed on the property card. Um, the property actually has, um, I think it was six acres. Uh, let's see, where is it? It says 4.1. Well, she's saying 4. Yeah, she, right. It was 4. Point, yeah. 
um, they were being overcharged by six acres. So they, we've been charging them for 10 acres when in fact it was 4.1 acres. Um, however, they, they did not file an abatement in a timely manner. Um, the abatements were due on uh, February 22nd of 19 was the last day that they could file an abatement. This person, uh, she came in on, I think it was March 6th. Um, so it, therefore, it's kind of out of my hands as far as uh, being able to um, recommend an abatement. So I'm recommending that it be denied. Uh, she was looking for you know, back taxes for, th for the three years. So the amount or the value for fiscal year 16, it would have been, uh, the abated amount was $193.20. 17 is $197.23. And fiscal year 18 would be $202.40. So my, I said my recommendation is, is that it be denied, but that's, I said it's up to the board's pleasure. And don't we only, we only go back one year, right? Isn't that typical? As, as assessors, you can go back one year. Um, as selectmen, you, you can go back three. Okay. But typically, we only typically. go back one. That's yeah. what I, I've, I've right. never seen it go well, What's that. the, um, so why can't they, why can't we give them the abatement? They missed well, the date? Well, the abatement has to be filed 185 days from the time taxes are committed. So the last day to file for an abatement for 2018 was on February 22nd. They can get another abatement next year if they want, right? Yes, yeah, sir. We've already made the correction, so it'll be okay, corrected right, for okay. next year going right. forward. But they're asking to go back three they're years. They're asking if that you go back the, the three years. But this has been occurring since 2005, yeah, and, so. And, and, I, and I read the law, and the law states the municipal officers may not grant an abatement to correct an error in the valuation of property. So in my opinion, this is an error in the valuation of the property. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, said so it would be, I don't know that you even have that authority to do that. But she, uh, she requested that, you know, the letter be presented and I just felt it was, um, you know. But she missed the deadline. Deserved an explanation. Yeah. But the deadline was missed, correct? The deadline was missed, yes. Okay, yeah, I think that's. And how was this discovered, if I can ask? Um, I don't know. <laughs> she, I think she happened to look at a property card, maybe after she got her tax bill or something, and realized that it was being assessed for 10 acres. Since 2005. Since mm -hmm. 2000, yeah. Um, not 2005, 2000, 2000, yeah, I guess it is 2005. Yeah, is because we can is. only go back three years, right, right, since right, 2005. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Was this re recorded in the Registry of Deeds as 10 acres as well, or? No, this it was, was recorded as 4.1. Okay. So I said, I don't know how long, it's been like that for a long time, and I don't know, I don't know how the mistake was made or who made it or whatever, but, you know, we said we certainly corrected it and we'll, you know, be good going forward. Well, I, <coughs> this issue came up uh, not too long ago, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we set the precedent then yeah. that if the deadline was missed, that... Uh, we wouldn't make any exceptions. Right. This this is a tough one, though. I, I find this to be difficult, but I th I find it, you know, frustrating that the the homeowner was not doing their due diligence to be aware of what they were being taxed for as well. Granted, it was our fault. That's absolutely yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm glad it's corrected at this point. But uh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll move that we accept Paul's recommendation. Um, to deny the request uh, as it's presented. Uh, I certainly hope that this is corrected for next year. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're picking up a lot of things because we're working on the reevaluation, we're going through sure. every property. So we're picking up a lot of things that we've uh, probably wouldn't have picked up if it wasn't for that. When was the last time we did evaluation? 2003. 2003. Yeah, it was a long time. Evaluation, right? Oh, shit, yeah. 16 years. Yeah. Yeah. We have a motion. I'll, I'll second the motion. Yeah. Is there uh, any further discussion? Mm -mm. <coughs> All those in favor? <coughs> thank you, Paul. Right, yeah, thank you. And thank everybody else for waiting. Is, uh, um, 
All right. So next is uh, we have a presentation on the proposed amendments to the land use ordinance. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to uh, welcome Noah to the planning board. I wasn't aware that we actually had a volunteer. We've been vacant for a while, so well, he hasn't been sworn in yet. So yeah. <laughs> well, you can still, still come to the next to meeting run. next Thursday, I'll, I'll and we look forward to getting you all caught up to speed. Um, you should have three copies in front of you or three separate uh, documents. There should be amendments uh, for June 2019 Part A. You should also have the Town of Furwick Littering and Animal Waste Ordinance, and then you should also have the amendments for marijuana. So this is the culmination of the last six months that we've been working on since the last time I came in front of you. Uh, these are, there's some minor changes in here. There's some recommendations that came from the town manager. There's also recommendations that came from the code enforcement officer. Two weeks ago, we held a public hearing, which was actually a very, very good turnout. I mean, Steve, you were here, yeah. and we got a lot of good feedback, and there's a few things that we put on the back burner because we realized that we needed a lot of, um, we needed to look into it a little bit more. So uh, we went ahead, and it was a unanimous approval to forward this on to you. So um, I'm going to start with these amendments for June 19, Part A. First thing I noticed at the top here, this graph here doesn't have the zones in here, so I'll make sure that that's changed. If you look at the top blocks there, they're all vacant. There's nothing in there. Um, essentially, we're allowing low-impact industrial now in the SCI, so where it says um, conditional there in, in uh, the shaded. Essentially, uh, low-impact industrial is the brewery. It's corner point, and this is something that we missed about a year and a half ago. Um, and it just got in the application for one Sullivan just got in underneath this and we changed it. We don't know why we did. We thought it, we think it was just a clerical error. So we went ahead and, and small impact in, or low impact industrial is what we want down here. We don't want big industry down here. Um, the next here uh, in the SCI district, minimum lot size, we changed that from 60,000 square feet to 10,000 square feet. The SCI districts, the Shoreland Commercial Industrial, which is essentially right here, um, which is one Sullivan, all, also across to Gateway Gas, three quarters of an acre. I, I don't think that there's three, any lot that's three quarters of an acre uh, downtown here. And this would allow for more commerce down here, eventually economic development. And many of the lots here are non-conforming then. These are mostly 10,000 square foot lots. So that's why we made that change. And that was at the recommendation of the town planner. Um, moving on to the second page here. There was something in here that said, initially said the setbacks may be reduced to the average of like setbacks of existing structures on abutting properties. What that means is non-conforming properties, you can make adjustments to setbacks. Before, it, it was everywhere in Berwick. So if you were up in the R3, you can be butted up to your neighbor's property line. We changed that to just be the SCI, the R1, the R2, and the RCI, just to make that can make the R3 continue to be rural, what we want it to be. Um, and then we struck out a couple different uh, sections here with the village overlay district because in the shoreland zoning district, it's one thing. It was just uh, redundant. Um, Roads, dead end streets, this came at the request of the town manager and public works. And dead end streets no longer would be able to be petitioned to become town roads because of the wear and tear on the town plows. And also, um, it's just trying to turn those trucks around. And, and, and it's just a lot of wear and tear, and it's a lot of manpower. So we decided to go ahead and write this here that any, anything that's not going to be connected, but at our public hearing, we had Steve Clement come out, and he has that um, development that's been going on for over 10 years now, connecting Cranberry Meadow and School Street. I think we all know what we're talking about. And he's eventually going to connect it. So we grandfathered everything prior to this year. So anybody who's got a, an active subdivision could come and petition the town for that. It has to be an active subdivision? Has to be active, right. correct. Has to be active. Uh, Dover's doing the same thing. That it's a good idea. Yeah. Yep. Um, down here in four, new definitions and terms on the use table. Mineral industry, industry minerals, and um, those two things that we didn't have in the ordinance, and we had an issue out on Route 4 where lawyers had to get involved, not only on the town side, but the applicant had to hire a lawyer in order to determine whether or not we can put that concrete plant out there on Route 4. And 
if we if we would have had these two definitions here in the ordinance, it probably would have made things a lot easier. So that's why we put them in there. And these come at the recommendation of the, the code enforcement officer who found them and also the town planner. Um, on the next page, this table here, uh, we're taking these are this is use tables and where you could have these uses in different parts of town. For instance, motorized vehicle traffic on existing roads and trails, that was actually a use. So we were saying that you could drive your car anywhere in Berwick. Or uh, you know, we took signs out because we have a sign ordinance. This, this was all redundant stuff. It just clears things up. It, it simplifies things and it makes things a lot cleaner. Um, and then animal farm was another thing that we had in here. Um, and this applied to the whole entire town of Berwick. Well, we had an applicant, or we had a, an, I think it was Little River Farms came out. And he was worried because if, if he's going to be selling his property, he lives out in R3, he definitely has 1.5 horse per acre of cleared hay pasture land. He's got more than that. So we exempted the um, R2 and the R3. So you can't have a horse downtown unless you have an acre of land, and that's not going to happen. We thought about eliminating all that altogether and just going off what the, um, the animal control officer says, but we just kept that in there. So the next one's the town of Berwick littering and animal waste ordinance, which this is yours. This is your ordinance. This is not a. This is not in the uh, the land use ordinance, um, and there was nothing in here. I think this came at the request of the town manager. Okay, so on page two we added in here because this this talked about animal waste and it talked about litter, and it defined uh, fines for litter, but it never defined penalties and fines for animal waste. So we put that in there. Could be a bigger problem once we have a bigger downtown and more people are starting to walk downtown. I know in some areas, I know in my neighborhood, it's becoming a problem, so. Um, and then marijuana, everybody's favorite subject. So it seems like every time I come here in front of you, we have a new, uh, some type of correction in the marijuana ordinance. And essentially what this is, we're tweaking a lot of the language to get ready for the recreational marijuana, retail marijuana. Um, so we changed a lot of the verbiage in this ordinance to reflect what uh, other municipalities are doing. So our town planner, you know, he works for five different communities and he's been getting a, a lot of uh, different templates and this is, essentially these are his recommendations um, that we've come up with here. The big thing is, this is going to be on a separate <coughs> ballot question as you probably already know. You're going to be voting, everybody's going to be voting on the land use ordinance, but then marijuana is going to be separate because that will be our opt-in to the town uh, become, uh, being open to licensing uh, retail marijuana. After a long discussion, we decided to continue to keep uh, marijuana production facilities and marijuana stores out in the um, CI district, which is out on Route 4, which is where we already have a couple grow operations for Medical marijuana. Route four and route nine. Route four. Just route four. Just route four. Yep, out out in that area. There was some interest in uh, possibly somebody wanting to come in downtown. We had heard about. Mm -hmm. We weren't necessarily comfortable with that yet, so we decided for the time being, we're just going to stick with what we were doing with medical marijuana and keep it out on route four. And I think that pretty much worked for everybody who came to the uh, public hearing. And then. We had to add some new things here, ethanol extraction, butane extraction, because over the past six months we learned a lot about marijuana production and there are some, um, this is being done here in Berwick, at, um, the extraction. So we didn't, we didn't have that in here before. Um, I mean everything else is, I think is pretty much self-explanatory. It's, it's now being called adult use. It won't be called recreational, it'll be called adult use marijuana. All right, I'd, I'd like to go back to the very first page. Sure. Is uh, for the general public, could you just uh, we know we heard of the the brewery as being a low impact industrial. What are some other low impact industrials? No, uh, so that people will know 
Yeah, small What's tech it? firms, things that really don't have a, a high a high impact. Uh, I, I can pull out the exact definition for <laughs> Sorry, you, you which will probably – yeah, so I mean, just you're not not a tannery, not, a tannery. not something that is going to be taking a uh, uh, having a huge burden on uh, on not only pedestrian or, or tr vehicle traffic uh, that's going to be using a lot of water, that's going to be using a lot of sewer. Uh, small businesses that manufacture, there there is a definition for it. So, but the brewery is is a prime example of that. David, you haven't um, heard anything through the grapevine if anyone has been looking around across the street, anything like that? I was going to ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I haven't, no. We, we've, been, we've been asking James, and James has been keeping us updated, but we haven't. We haven't. We did hear something about the Blue Hyde building, but I think that kind of fell through. So We keep a list of all the inquiries that we've had, yeah. and we've had, I think it's over 10, closer to 15, of people who are interested in coming here and we give them the contact information for Mr. <laughs> Cahaya on the Jupiter, and uh, that for it seems to stop. Right. So uh, that first man we talked to from Manchester, yeah. right? It, it, he um, <laughs> he's doing that building over in Summersworth, the liquor state liquor store, mm -hmm. the old brick garage. He's doing that there. Dick Anagos. <coughs> right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I've got several other people who are interested in, in the property. Yeah. Just wish um, it would happen. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm going to reach out to them this Something. week and, uh, and see if I can get with them. We've already been in touch with one, uh, but there's several others that have expressed it. It seemed to me with the economy being the way it is, something would come in and burp and it would start a little bit of a things kicking in gear there, you know what? Mm -hmm. It'd be great. Yeah, this has been dragged out for way too long. It's oh ridiculous. Boy. I think that's it's the big hurdle is the owner. It's, it's, it's obviously that because, like Steve said, there's, there's a list. Um, I just wanted to point out a couple things about the small businesses down here that, you know, we did the form-based code and how signs should look and how lighting should be and, and things like that. Corner Point's doing a great job of it. That's exactly how we want the buildings to look with signage and lighting. And we just approved the application on Thursday for 6 Sullivan. We went in there, we did a site, a site walk, in case you're not familiar with it. It's right next to uh, Dennis's place, Deb and Duke's. The old House of Hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the old House of Hope. And downstairs they have a holistic tattoo shop which uh, I saw Friday night. There was actually people in there. Uh, and on the second floor, they still have the restaurant. It looks like when uh, Einstein's was in there, they have a full, they're trying to get a bakery uh, cafe up there. And then the third floor, they're doing yoga on Sunday mornings. And the place up there still looks as beautiful. It is very young owners who came to Berwick because um, of kind of what's going on. So I, I, met, I met them on Friday when yeah. I was walking through town. Yeah. And uh, they're very, very excited. Yeah. You know, totally. Very, very energetic. Yeah. You know. And their sign is conforming to our, <laughs> our form base code. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, any other questions of Dave? No, not yet. <laughs> the last thing that I have, the, the last thing that I have is uh, it's going very well with Lee J as our um, town planner. If it wasn't, I'd probably come up here and say, we need a town planner, you know, if we were that busy. But he's been coming to every meeting. He's very accessible by email. He is very easy to work with. And then there's James, of course. I mean, James is, is really uh, do doing a great job. So he, he really knows yeah. what he's doing. James so is yeah. doing a great job. He is. He is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know he's listening at home right now, so you're welcome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, James. <laughs> and no, you're not getting the raise. <laughs> so it's it's working out at for the level of, of, uh, uh, of business that we're, we're seeing at the board. Right. So yeah. it's, it's working out financially as well. <laughs> Do you see that changing, though, if this across the street takes off? I, I think we could manage it at this point. Uh, no, with as the long as we keep James busy and, and code enforcement, uh, we're adding more hours to code enforcement for the upcoming budget because and I more think taxes. <laughs> so um, it's uh, I, I think that when time we'll, comes, we'll I keep. Suppose. I expect when things that. get a little bit tougher and we need more time, then no, I'll hear true. from them or yeah. James, and we'll just Breakout. keep going at the rate we're going and see what happens. Sure. Yep. So we have somebody training to be a code enforcement officer, a young woman from town. Uh, and she's almost passed all her exams. She just passed her plumbing, which is probably the most difficult <laughs> right, really. part. Of it. And she wanted to be a code enforcement officer. So she's learning a lot from Dan, who we have currently, and uh, it's kind I of fun to watch. Hard. There are yeah. a good threesome in that office, James, yeah. Dan, and, and Jennifer. They work well together, so they help each other out. She's excited, so we can tell her. 
Thank you, Dave. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, thanks everybody on the plan board. Appreciate it. I know you guys are putting set. in some long hours, too. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. You too. <coughs> Recreation master plan. I've heard a lot about it. Rumor has it. I'm excited to be here to present about the recreation master plan. Well, I, I'm, I'm, no, I, I, I tease you about it, but I know you no, guys have been working hard. There's a lot of moving parts, and uh, yeah, no, you I, guys have really you know, put some hours in. I know that much. Yeah. yeah, so this is actually an exciting day for us to, to be able to pre be presenting to you about our draft recreation master plan because our efforts go back to 2016. You know, we formed the Ad Hoc Recreation Master Planning Committee as an offshoot of Envision Berwick back then. And the idea was, now that so much is changing in town and we've got plans to do with crime and other things, Great Falls you know, Park and a lot of other things are happening, it's time to take a comprehensive look at rec recreation master planning in town. And you know, there have been some work done um, in 94 and 2004. You know, and but that but some of the most of those recommendations were very general and didn't get to a lot of specifics. We've I think upped the ante with the plan that you have in your package, and you have a draft plan for us. And I, I do want to, as we're proceeding with this presentation, give um, some props to the people that that were a part of this committee. Ruth Ballou, who's and the one thing you hear as I list these people off is all these volunteers serve in another place in town too and they decided to do recreation master planning because it was a natural fit for them and it kind of they were they're invested in Berwick and I think that's why we all do this you know you guys probably know me a little bit from from prime tanning and from Envision Berwick and other things but when I was asked to do recreation master planning I didn't really know a lot about it but uh, you know it was something that I was willing to help with and and to just to start to to think in different terms in town I think is, is helpful so um, our committee members were Ruth Ballou, who's a, a member of the um, Envision Berwick, and she actually wrote one of the chapters in the plan that you have in front of you, and she wrote the Creative Culture Plan. Natalie, Natalie Gould, she wrote the Community Center Plan, and she's also been involved in a lot of other things. She was involved with our Community Center um, group that was established in the past, and hopefully as a part of what you'll see in our plan is that we're asking for that group to be revitalized and to get going again. Um, she also helped, you know, had a big part of the community center part of the plan. Scott Richardson, who was our basically editor of, of this plan, and, and he helped our group tremendously with everything. He also had a huge part in writing the, the trails part of our plan. Um, he also was a member of uh, the trails committee and also a member at, of Envision Berwick in the past. So, um, we can, again, another person that's been wearing multiple hats. Kim Taylor, who's a recreation, uh, who's a part of the recreation uh, department. So we're, we're glad to have we're glad to have Kim's insight uh, on this group because we could we could hear firsthand on how things are, you know, kind of current conditions that were being handled. So we could write to needs. Um, John Stoll, our past planner, who after he left planning decided to help this group because he's a he li still lives here in town. All these people are residents, obviously. Penny's Penny Zust, who um, was an Envision <coughs> Berwick member, and she wrote the communications part of our plan. Um, so. Getting on to our process, obviously going back to 2016, we wanted to first get information, get feedback from the public. So we spent a lot of time soliciting the public's feedback. We, we developed a mailer, we developed an online questionnaire that was specific to recreation needs, and so we could start to, to understand what, what, what the needs were out there and what, what we could do to help the community. Um, we engaged the public, we, held a we had a rec, rec master planning summit 35 people attended. We used online clickers to basically get real-time responses from people during this summit. And that we took our results from that initial survey, went back out and wanted some clarity on some additional things, and we were able to do that with that summit. We, s we stood at the transfer station and at the library for a couple of sessions, handing out questionnaires and trying to get responses. So all this led to a productive response from our questionnaire alone. We got 450 responses. And looking at the demographics, it lines up with what Berwick is. So we're confident that this data represents, you know, our community, which is really great. Um, we um, we did an election date table, you know, to get some of the additional results out and to, so, and to tell people what more, you know, we've kind of learned, which was great. And then we met over the last basically year and a half and been have been writing this plan that you have before you. And um, this plan 
that you have before you, I want to stress, is a draft plan. There's some things that you have at the end of your at the end of this package that of things that we still need to do. There's some editing that needs to happen. There's some general um, there's some general materials that need to be incorporated in this, like maps and the appendices that we that we call out. But it's really incorporating some of that stuff. And then there, one of the appendices is really going to be specific to talking about how we can fund some of the things that we're talking about. How do we do some of these projects? And we think there's some ways to do that. If you look back at past rec budgets, you can see that there's, an, some, there's some excess balance that ends up going various places. And we think that there's money to capture going forward and maybe to look back to do some of these projects, some of the low-hanging fruit that we have in our plan. And our major goals of this plan wasn't to encumber the town and the taxpayers with a whole bunch of new fancy projects. Our basic tenet was to evaluate and improve the existing con conditions at, at our town-owned <coughs> facility. That was the first and foremost thing that was our charge, we felt. And then we wanted to uh, sort of identify what other new projects could be done to meet the needs of the people in the community. And so that was kind of how we did it. And then we drafted this plan. The plan is divided up. It's got athletics, community center, creative culture, tra uh, trails and parks, water sports, and communications as major sections. Built in that and interwoven in that are also some, some other, each section kind of has its own recommendations, has general recommendations, has five-year recommendations, and then it has five to sort of 20-year recommendations. So we're looking out, hopefully, 20 years. But I think we should all recognize we want this plan to basically be adopted eventually and be incorporated into the comprehensive plan, either as a chapter or an appendix. And um, it's still, we want this to be a living document that when it comes to the funding part, the appendix that we have in there, that might be need to be looked at in a, a, every year or every other year basis to, to kind of be updated. And also things in town are going to change. And so priorities may change in the community. And so, you know, in the list of projects that, that sort of comes out of this should be prioritized as we go forward, kind of on a continu continual basis. And people need to be involved. We think in Vision Berwick and an offshoot of in Berwick, Berwick can be, a gr group can be formed from that, and they can take the charge of recommending to Envision Berwick, who recommends to you how to execute, how to continually execute this. Because there's a lot of things in this. We, we dealt with, there's a lot of recommendations in here, a lot of which don't cost a lot of money to execute. Some do. You'll see in the community center section, we're recommending that the, the town overwhelmingly supports a community center. 95% of our survey reci recipients said, okay, we think it's a good idea. And um, the, the town has identified 71 as a, good loca as a good location to do recreational opportunities. We think it's a good location to do for um, future, a future community center. There's some steps that have to happen in order to execute that fully, one of which would be to start looking to kind of revitalize that group again, the community center, I alluded to that earlier. Secondarily, is kind of start to execute uh, Mike LaSalle's plan for, he's got a, a kind of a little bit of a massive plan, but I think that could be built upon and, ex and, and kind of strengthened as we go forward. Funding needs to be identified for that because maybe the burden shouldn't all be on the taxpayers. There, there may be other sources, and I apologize, I have a cold. Uh, the burden shouldn't all be on the taxpayers to, to do that. There, there are funding sources. A group should be put together to look at funding sources and funding raising, raising options to help offset what that cost us. Because when you look at this plan, that's the, this is the, that's the biggest thing in here is a community center. And there are lots of ways to fund it other than just, just taxes. So we, we identify that. And when it comes to a lot of um, recreational things, impact fees could be used. And specifically, we have also identified where some of the open space account of the um, impact fees could potentially be used. And that might be a little bit harder to use than the, than the recreation balance in that. So looking at that and being cognizant for every step of how can we fund that from either existing money that we have, future money that we can generate from outside of the community and help, you know, in, whether it's corporate sponsorship or other things. So we're recommending a lot, a lot of things to look, to look at in the plan. And, um, you know, I feel like uh, full, fully executed with a group that's engaged 
that we can, we can roll this plan out and execute it over the long term in a pragmatic way that um, wouldn't be a tremendous burden to the community. So you, you're looking at the second draft. The first draft, what we went out to stakeholders in early, um, early January, and that was Envision Berwick reviewed the document, Friends of the Riverfront reviewed the document, and then um, we also went out to um, the Recreation Department, and they all gave us comments. Mm -hmm. And so the comments, the do document you're looking at incorporates a lot of those com comments, with the exception of what's at the very end last sheet. And that's something that we hope to to work on in the, in the short term, and we think we can we can finish flushing this out. But you know, obviously, the question for you will be, how do we get this adopted in, and then approved? You know, as a part of the comprehensive plan, and what what will the timing be? We'd like to think that we could push forward and do that, but we know that you have strict rules that govern when when things can come in. And you know, today we're not give. This is not a complete draft. But we definitely want to stress that um, there are th there are things that we're working hard on to, to to solve. And the biggest one is that funding kind of appendix that that I talked about. And then if you have like I can run down some of the, uh, you know, when it comes to certain things, you know, for, for the Memorial Field, which is an existing facility that we have, you know, we want to spend some more time rethinking that. We think there should be a master planning effort when it comes to, to that. Because there's a lot of things we heard from our, from the, from our um, community uh, questionnaire that we put out that people want down there. Improved security, they want better parking, they'd like permanent bathrooms, things like that. Not saying they all, they all can be done, but they should be looked at and prioritized. The other thing is some impact fees for open space can be used to acquire some land around it to help broaden and imp improve the overall facility, which I think would be tr would add tremendously. It's in our core of our downtown. And also connecting that, using monies, open space monies maybe, to connect that with the rest of the downtown makes logical sense. And that, con that connection, is, is it goes both ways. You'll see in the plan that we've written in you know, sidewalks. Sidewalks are important. Adopting, you know, we've got a sidewalk plan. Th th thoroughly adopting that, getting that in as a chapter of the comprehensive plan, and, and executing that because it connects everything, mm -hmm. you know, in our downtown. And then bike lanes, you know, connecting recreational users with all of the other opportunities and all the parks. We're doing great work at Great, at great Falls Park now. That's, be, that's going forward. But how do we connect that with everything else? So somebody who comes to the community can get a real clear view on, hey, what are my opportunities and, and how do I go from one to another? Bike, bike lanes, you know, making it more pedestrian friendly um, and stuff like that will, will definitely help with the flow of people who are using our recreational opportunities in town. We think that's vitally important. Another thing we learned about our community um, w from our survey is that a lot of people recreate in Berwick, but people still didn't understand all of the breadth of the things, the opportunities that we have. And so we think a good, solid communication plan is something that can be really low-hanging, that can get the word out about all the things that you can do to recreate in Berwick, whether it's up to Penny Pond, whether it's you know, Hatfield, you know, improve, doing some minor improvements there. We've already had the Friends of the uh, Berwick Riverfront come in to our committee and say, we'd like to do one of your low-hanging fruit, which is we'd like to go do a little volunteer project and do a dock up there. You guys help work get the, get the parking improved a little bit there, or at least defined a little bit better, and we'll help you put in a, we'll help you put in a dock. And you guys already know this, and I know this too now from being here since 99, most of the things happen this way in Berwick, people just stepping up to the plate. And, and I think our goal is, I think, to keep identifying all of those low-hanging fruit, little projects that we can continually do that just helps up the ante and helps get the word out about all the great things that we have from a recreation perspective in town. Yeah. Any questions of Rick? Yeah. Oh, wow. Pretty good. Oh, this Pretty is great. Good. <laughs> it's good to have a map, oh, road map. Right. Uh, right. Starting point. And uh, the last thing I'll say is that um, we're committed to this process, and we're, I'm happy to come back and um, at the next meeting and answer questions. I can mm -hmm. do a little bit more formal presentation. I can talk specifics on any of our recommendation. I can answer your questions relative to those. At some point, we're going to go out to the public with this. I mean, obviously, it's in the public record now, right. but 
there's, there's, we have Ruth Ballou, who I mentioned, who's a committee member. She's got some great artwork that we're going to incorporate. We're going to incorporate a lot of photos in this. We're going to do a lot of general editing for when it goes out to the general public. So we have big plans overall for the document. But we want to make sure that it meets everybody's needs first. And, and when that does, we'll add a summary table at the end that summarizes and prioritizes all of the recommendations. And so you'll have that. It's, it's sort of akin to the downtown vision plan, and that was sort of our directive, to kind of follow that. And so that, so that, that's what we're doing. Every selectman meeting that you want me to, I'll come to, and I'll keep talking about this plan. Well, everyone we want to. Everyone you want. Put you on the agenda every week. We're, 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 we're truly excited. All those people that participated, uh, as I mentioned, are, were, are just so valuable to our community. And they, they represent the people who get this stuff done. And it was a delight to have everybody uh, around the table. We and we had some we did we truly collaborated, which is as you know, is not meeting in the middle. Collaboration is let's talk about this until we get some consensus. And sometimes that can be hard, but man, this group was amazing. It was fun. And, and as you said, Ms. Dye, is all the people involved in that group were doing something else or are still doing something else still in doing. town. Yeah. You know, yeah. Is, uh, they're just amazing as uh, the people that get things done. Um, I just, you know, going through your thing real quickly is, um, is uh, Horns Mill. <coughs> you don't have that on your list as far as. Oh, okay. See, that's, yeah. this is why longtime residents can add tremendous value. Uh, we Horn, had, we Horns, had Horns Mill off of uh, Hubbard Road, just mm -hmm. before the bridge. Yeah. The town owns a piece of property back in there on the river, on the Little River. That's the other thing is John Stoll had started before he left a map right. of all the recreational opportunities, yeah. and we're, we envision that going in here before the, append the appendices in this report. And in that way, that'll be kind of the starting conversation for people who come to the community and identify this plan. They'll be able to see that. The future holds that we want to do an online recreational link that'll take you and direct you, direct you to, to all the opportunities that you can do in Berwick. It'll be, when we want to do a package, for example, like you can come into the town hall if you're new to the community or just want to find out about recreational, you can grab a package that kind of outlines all that stuff. And then tying that to all the things like branding that are happening in the town, I think, you know, consistent signage with all the locations will help people identify when there's a recreational opportunity. So it's, hopefully you'll, 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 you'll see a lot of good in that. Thank you, and, and thanks to everybody who's been involved. Yes. It's been incredible. Uh, I know, I know. I keep teasing you about how long it's taken, but I can see why it's taken this long. <laughs> we do like to take our time. I will yeah. give well, you. Well, you're that. very thorough. Yeah. You know, like you said, you're very thorough, and uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, thanks a lot. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's see. That brings us to unfinished business. Yeah. We have none really. Nope. It's town manager's report. Well, uh, not much to say. We've had a pretty busy two weeks uh, with the incidents we had here, um, staff throughout the town office and throughout the whole organization was impacted by it. And, and they, I just want to commend everybody who uh, did a great job. And uh, our fire department, our on-call staff, uh, full-time staff, they were amazing to step up and, and uh, do what needed to be done and, and assist this IMT group. Um, I, I, I want to, is the, the town police department, oh, no, yeah. they, they've been amazing, you know, right yeah. from the start, from controlling the situation at the fire, right through being the honor guard. Yeah. Is, uh, we actually have one of our officers actually trying to get the hose onto the uh, hydrant there, just because he got there first to help. So it's, uh, it's just everybody pulls together in this town, Good. like you see mm -hmm. here. Yeah. So it's impressive. and and. We got just tons and tons of good remarks uh, about people here in our organization, what, what they do. So it was nice to hear. And, that, and we know this. I, right. Uh, we have good people. Um, aside that, we're hopefully getting back on track and we'll start looking at planning things uh, for Memorial here in Berwick. Um, and uh, otherwise, Public Works didn't, wasn't able to make it to the memorial because they had to plow snow. So, <laughs> unfortunately, but um, besides that, we have a, uh, I'm coming up on a um, career day at the uh, Noble High School, and I'm going to be talking to s students about careers in the public sector, especially town government. 
We have some handouts from there's a group, group organization, part of MMA that's called the Homegrown. It's a push to get people to start looking, you know, young people to look at jobs in local government that actually they have never thought of doing. So what is that, Steve? Um, the one for, at Noble is uh, next uh, Monday, Wednesday, the twentieth, and then we have one uh, on April eleventh, which is the uh, middle school. So we'll be doing a little bit more there. Uh, I'm probably probably bring in some uh, fire truck and, and plow truck and yeah. just to have the kids come out and look at this big equipment. It's, they don't get a chance to see that, and t you know they get a chance to vision. Maybe that's something they might like to do. Yeah, they love that. Yeah, they will like it. And uh, and we have a lot of good information that MMA put together, and we just copied it and printed it off. So. And, they can hopefully have a lot of questions for us, and um, <clears throat> I'm sure the middle school kids or the high school kids will ask about salaries and what people earn, uh, and I think we're competitive at, in the public sector for rain, so um, there'll be, hopefully I get some good good feedback from everybody. Good. So, otherwise, that's, uh, we're just moving forward. You know, budget's done, uh, except I got a few additions that we'll talk about later. Um, I, I think we should put in the budget and changes that are going on up in Augusta that are good and bad. So we'll talk about that later on another time. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Selectman's communication. Um, I've received all kinds of emails, you know, asking from towns everywhere, you know, North Burke, Lebanon, South Burke, some of the rest, you know, anything that they could do to assist us. You know, I want to you know. Thank everybody for that. Um, is the other communication is the Maine Municipal Association is preparing to, uh, you know, go do testimony on the governor's budget and uh, particularly revenue sharing. Um, for people that don't know, is by statute the state's supposed to give five percent of the sales tax back to the and income tax and income tax back to the the cities and towns to aid in tax reduction um, the last administration well it has been cut before the last administration really cut it down we're at what 2.5 right now no we're at two percent two percent right now um, the budget for 2019 it's supposed to go back up to five percent yeah. um, the governor's been Governor Mills' new budget is proposing it at 2.5% for 2020. And I just want to give a couple figures so people out there will know. Uh, this is from, the, from uh, Maine Municipal. From fiscal year 2015 to fiscal year 2019, Berwick has lost $2,819,100. $193 in revenue sharing that's due to us. Um, the difference between the proposed 2.5% is the proposed 2.5% is 557455 and obviously the 5% would be twice that, a little over a million dollars. So this is you know, serious money yep. that, you know, I know a lot of the representatives I've talked to recently uh, upset that it's not going back up to five. There's a hearing at the Appropriations Committee next Wednesday, the 20th. Um, I plan on going up and speaking on that. And, uh, and believe me, I'll be uh, twisting the arms of all the legislators and senators that I can up there. So um, this is something, you know, half a million dollars a year we're talking. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to fund our roads we're looking at 600000 this year, and we could easily put a million dollars a year in and still be behind. Yeah. We have two bridges in Berwick on the back roads that will be need to be replaced, and the cost of the town is half a million dollars each for each bridge. You know, so yeah, this is you no know, serious money. So um, I know the MMA and a lot of other you know, city and towns are going to be fighting this, so hopefully we'll come out on top. Yeah, this so. This was this whole revenue sharing, just to fill in a little bit, was put in place. The statute was put in place y many years ago uh, to help the municipalities keep the property tax under, so people could afford it to live here. Um, and over the years, it's done very well. 
it, it, it actually didn't start in the in Governor LePage's administration. It started before that, right, in uh, where they started cutting us uh, uh, the, that amount of money. Um, and it's in statute right now that the agreement was when they took a little bit more from us and brought it down to 2 percent, that this coming year, 19, it's in statute that it will go back up to 5 percent. The governor is asking the legislature to change that, and we're saying it's no. no. And what that does is it really helps any, all the municipalities keep your property tax lower, if we can, uh, versus, I hate to say this, versus educational funding, which is what uh, your governor wants to put into uh, this year more money. That money does not help offset taxes. It just helps fund programs and, and uh, staffing, and, and they have those needs. But I think right now with the aging population, we have in this community and all throughout the whole state, we need some property tax relief and, and able to get back on yeah. track and, and get our infrastructure in place. So that's yeah. my two cents worth. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully it's $2 million worth. Yeah, <laughs> $2 million <laughs> worth. Um, I, I don't have anything from Comcast, believe it or not. What? <laughs> I think this is the first time I have, can say that in about six months. <laughs> so. Um, all right, is approval of accounts payables. <clears throat> Do we have a water warrant 0935 from February 28, 2019 for the amount of $6,473.88. There's account payable warrant 1935 from February 28, 2019, and speaking about school budgets, <laughs> for the amount of $740,063.28. We have a payroll warrant, 1936, from March 7th, 2019, for the amount of $59,581.13. Account payable warrant, 1936, from March 7th, 2019, for the amount of $135,078.30. <coughs> we have a water warrant, 0936, from March 7th, 2019 for the amount of $6,337.12 and a payroll warrant 1937 for March 14th 2019 for the amount of $69,448.02 as I make a motion that we pay our bills. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, new business, we have okay. nothing under new business. Nope. Quick claim deeds, we have none. We've done our abatements. Is second public comment. Is second public comment is if you have a comment, please step to the podium, give us your <coughs> name and address. And by rules, I can say you can talk forever, but I hope you don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Seeing no public comment. Oh. The library. Sure. Like to talk about the library? Oh, sure. You can talk about anything. <laughs> you can even talk about us. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just want to listen to you. Um, so uh, we are just here tonight because we um, had put in a request for the 5000 um, for our budget for this year. So we're just, um, you know. Advocating for yeah, it. Yeah, advocating for, for us to... Um, get that amount because we have, you know, we have to consider the staff, as we said, and um, things aren't getting less, they're getting more, so. It, I hate to interrupt you, but it, could you identify yourself? I'm sorry, for, for the I'm Paula people at home? and I'm the president of the Berwick right. Library yeah. Association. Right, I know who you are, but yes, yeah. other people don't, I'm so. Sorry. <laughs> um, so um, we're just, representing the library to advocate to see if we can get this $5,000 increase and have the selectmen approve it. Right. And um, and I know there's a warrant uh, committee meeting coming up, but. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we haven't no, made any decisions on everything yet as a final, but is, uh, it's in there and being considered. So mm -hmm. is, uh, is, <coughs> is next meeting? Yeah, the 20, uh, 25th. The 25th is when we actually yeah. vote to uh, uh, the board votes on what goes into the warrant. So okay. is 26th. 25th. 
20 some something. 26. <laughs> we're all like. <laughs> Uh, 26. 26 is when we're, we will actually be voting on the warrant and putting things in there. So, as it stands right now, everything is, is on the table. So, right. just so you right. know. Nothing has been decided yet. Okay, and officially. And we'll be back for the warrant. You'll be back. <laughs> You'll be back. <laughs> and the other thing that I'll just mention, too, uh, when you brought up, um, uh, you know, a recognition of um, Joel Barnes. Um, as you know honoring him we have let chief plant know that the library would like to do something uh, when they're ready and he has responded that he he would appreciate that and he'll take it into consideration but he just uh, you know we all understand that they're grieving now and this is not the time to do it but we'd like to consider that so when you brought it up uh, that the town wants to do something uh, if you want to have us participate in that. We or certainly do. Certainly. We want everybody to participate. But I mean, we had offered Your to space. have it at the library, so oh. the library isn't, isn't a big uh, right. facility, but right. certainly it, we're open to that. Right. He was very active with your vote at the library. Joel was. Yeah. yeah. So really excellent. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I just wanted to mention that as well. Right. Yeah, it, it, be, before, before anything's decided, I would imagine that we'll be putting some kind of a committee together, you know, with people to, you know, do something appropriate. And, uh, you know, is, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking something like along like a, a candlelit, you know, memorial or something, you know, where everybody can participate or something. But obviously that'd be when better weather comes. <laughs> yeah. So, but, is, uh, yeah, it, you know, every, like, as you said, it's all, pretty raw and emotional right now, so is, uh, we'll, you know, talk to the fire chief and uh, take things into consideration. We will be in touch with you, I'm sure. We will okay, that would be great. Right in we're willing to right. do whatever. I think everybody is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? And you can all get up and advocate for the library if you really want. <laughs> <laughs> will, it, will it do us some good? Yeah. <laughs> No, because you'd, you'd be delaying the you be delaying our adjournment. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Any further public comment? Uh, we have no executive session. Any other business non-agenda items to bring up? I'd just like to uh, bring up something that I received uh, shortly after we had gone through the budget process. The York County um, um, Shelter has made a request of the board to fund uh, $200 towards that. It's for the opioid uh, shelter and, and work that they do there. Um, I would recommend it's only $200, it's not gonna break the bank. It, I, I, you allow me to put that back in, put that in the budget. Yeah. Uh, only 200? Only 200, I, I was shocked at that. Yeah. But uh, they, they do, it's they the send a large packet. It for emergency planning, I think, isn't it? Yeah. 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 You know, 500 is what yeah. we do for that. Only yeah. do 500. Yeah. But, uh, I think it's worthwhile. Oh, definitely. I, oh, yeah. I, you know, I'd <coughs> <coughs> okay. Um, and there's a few other small things that we'll be changing, but we can go through that when we do the warrant thing. Okay. 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 Anything okay. else? No. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Thank you, everybody.